<laughs> you are so cute. <laughs>
in this next um, little clip, but some of the air cells are a little wonky. Um, it happens with shipped eggs. It just kind of means you might have to um, possibly assist a hatch if the chick you know, isn't able to pip at the right cell, side of the air cell. If the air cell gets too big, it happens a lot with saddle um, air cells where the um, air cell will be too big and the chick has a lot of trouble getting out. So here's what I mean. We're looking at the same egg, but um, here was the front that I was showing you over here on this side. But back here, we have a little bit of saddling going on. So we'll have to watch these, some of these ones closely. And my flashlight just died. <laughs> And here's one on day seven, nothing really developed in here. You can see that wonky air cell, but this is one where we just don't have any development. You can see here, this one's air cell is also just kind of crazy. So this one may not even have enough space to fully properly develop. We're gonna have to watch closely. So all in all we have, I moved two to the center that um, looks like they, um, one that looks like it never developed at all. I'm literally just keeping it in there just because just watching it. Um, and the other one is the one that I just showed you um, that uh, looks like it started and then quit pretty early on, but I'm gonna keep an eye on that. But overall we have 12 out of 14 developing. So I think that's amazing for shipped eggs. The, um, the breeder that I got them from, Definitely, she's doing something right with that pen because um, very high fertility after shipping. Um, only a couple of the air cells are super, super bad. Um, everything else looks really great. On day eight, the uh, chick or the embryo will actually open its beak for the first time. So you could see the little baby bouncing around in there. You could see the eye. It's a pretty cool. And on day nine, the interesting fact about development is that their claws actually start to develop on this day. And you can see that baby jumping around everywhere in there. Day 10, we have tail feathers starting to appear. Day 11, the scales begin to form on the feet and the legs. Okay, day 12, the eyelids form. You could tell this one's a little bit saddled. Um, it looks like it's gonna do well. We're gonna mark the air cells um, later on before we put them into lockdown. So we can watch and make sure the chicks are pipping on the right side. And day 13, the wattles and the comb start to take formation. Okie dokes y'all. So on day 14, the embryo starts to turn towards the blunt side of the egg. Okay, dogs, guys, so I just went through and candled all 12 that we have remaining, and it looks like, um, you know, we have life and movement in all of them. Even this one, this one, I'm just showing you because it's the one I'm most concerned about. On the others, the air cells are all pretty good. This is the only one where the air cell is questionable. Um, we're going to have to watch this one closely, but for right now, this one is still thriving. I'm just hoping that there's enough room for it to fully develop and to develop properly. On day 15, the small intestines are taken into the body. And on day 16, the scales, the beak, and the claws um, start to become a little bit harder. Up until now, they've been kind of soft in there. All right, y'all, so it's day 17. Tomorrow is lockdown day. Um, nothing really like new development wise the scales the beak and um, the claws are continuing to um, harden today and then tomorrow we'll check everybody out um i'm gonna trace those air cells and we'll prepare for lockdown so it's day 18 lockdown day um don't mind me over here i uh <laughs> <laughs> I have a problem, but um, <laughs> I'm going to put these babies into lockdown. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to candle all of them, make sure that they're still um, viable, going strong. We have 12 in here, so hopefully all 12 are still thriving. Um, I'm gonna, What I'm going to do is those funky air cells, I'm going to trace them all with a pencil, um, what the air cell looks like, so that we know where the chick should be pipping, um, so that we can watch them closely on hatch day here in a couple days. 
Okay, so this one is probably the worst air cell that we have. Most of them, honestly, are really pretty good. Um, I've gone ahead and I laid down the shelf liner to prepare them from ha for hatching. I obviously took out the, um, the turner and I've been marking where all the air cells are. Um, you could tell that they pretty much, for the most part, have all um, kind of corrected themselves. They're not perfect. This is the only one um, that I'm a little bit concerned with. Um, we do right now have movement in there, so the baby chick is alive. All 12 are alive right now going into lockdown, so hopefully we will have all 12 hatch. Alrighty, so we got them in there. It's all closed up. We're not going to open that until after hatch. Um, I typically don't go in there. Um, open it at all. If you have anybody pipped or anything, unless you have an emergency going on there and you have something going on and you need to step in and help a chick or something like that, um, do not open the incubator no matter like how excited you get or anything like that. But the last thing we're going to do is again, we're going to take out this um, little red thingy mo bobber and we're going to fill that up to bump the humidity all the way up to, I like to be right around 72, 73 for the last three days. All right, so on day 19, the yolk sac completely enters the body. And then on day 20, they say that the yolk sac is actually like drawn into the body cavity. All right, so it's day 20. We have some, um, please excuse the baby crying in the background if you could hear that. <laughs> but um, we have some pips right on the air cell. You can see like right there is a pip. Um, trying to see here. We have a pip right here, so right in within the air cell. So it's kind of cool to see where all these chicks end up pipping. We have one in the back too that'll be hard to show you, but it's interesting to kind of watch where they pip and where they're trying to come out. Okie doke, so it's Easter morning actually, day 21. Um, I swear I didn't plan that, but it just kind of happened that way. But we have pips in, um, 10 of the 12, one as you can see already hatched, and I keep looking at the other two, looking for pips. I don't see anything yet, um, but because they are all pipped, I can't really go in and candle or see what's going on. Um, I don't wanna mess with the humidity and mess up the hatch, so we're gonna leave those guys be. So you guys saw that we had a great hatch, um, super excited, um, so just like thrilled to be adding some of these um, new babies to um, my buff pen. Um, it's always good to incorporate um, some new blood into your line, obviously to eliminate any like just like inbreeding things like that, but also just to get some new blood, some new traits. It um, it really helps your breeding. Um, so. Just make sure if you are NPIP certified to be also ordering from someone else who is NPIP certified, stay in that um, to maintain your certification and all that. But other than that, um, yeah, but thank you guys so much for watching and please don't forget to like and subscribe. There's so much to say. <laughs> all right, bye guys.